Y'all sound good. Thank you. Welcome to the second service today on Easter Sunday. Y'all looking good. Look at your neighbor and say, you look good. Amen. You know, as Easter message, we've always been taught, you know, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Amen. And, and, and I don't want to uh, skip over that part today at all, uh, understanding that they did crucify our Savior. He carried his own cross to, the, to Golgotha. He wasn't, he wasn't coached. He wasn't drugged. He wasn't paid. He went freely to Golgotha, and he laid his life down for each one of us. As he stretched out across that cross, and they nailed his hands and feet to that cross, and they stood him up, and they made him suffer till he took his last breath. Then he cried out, Abba, Father. He said, I commit my soul, my spirit, into your hands. The Bible says that they borrowed a tomb because they knew it wouldn't be there. And they put him in it. And on the third day, that stone was rolled away. And the tomb was empty. I don't know about you, but somebody that can predict their crucifixion, fulfill their crucifixion, predict their coming back, and predict their resurrection, I think that's who I want to follow. Amen? Amen. I don't know about y'all. Give Jesus a hand clap of praise in his house today. <laughs> Amen? I asked a question earlier. Um, what do we got to do to be right with God when that time comes? How many of you know, boy, somebody dies, everybody uh, automatically, we're, we're, then they start realizing that, you know, we're not invincible, that we're all one day going to die. It's biblical because the Bible says that every man is appointed a time to die. Amen? We're all going to die. And we'll get at a funeral and we'll say some stuff like, well, he was a good guy. He was a good person. He always did what was right. He loved people. He's in a better place now. Amen? He's in a better place now. Or better yet, we go to Grandma's funeral. Well, at least Grandma's not suffering no more. Grandma's in heaven looking down on us. Grandma's in heaven looking down on us. Grandma's in heaven looking down on us. I don't know about you, but there's probably about three times a day I really don't want Grandma looking down on me. And the church said, <laughs> it's kind of weird, isn't it? She's not suffering anymore. What does it take to be right with God? That's the answers I want to give you today. Amen. We live in a very uh, pluralistic society today that uh, we live in an inclusive world that everybody's opinion matters and everybody's beliefs matter to the point where, man, we'll take on some, some crazy ideas about God. Like all paths lead to God. That's not correct. All religions are basically the same. Get a feel-good theology. I mean, we'll come up with stuff like, I once was re reincarnated. Some people believe in reincarnation. If you do, I'm not here to offend you. But hang in there. Don't cut me off. I'm going to tell you the truth at the end. Reincarnation, this is what they believe, that whatever it is they love on this earth right now, that must be what they were in their previous life. So in other words, in, 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 in other words, if you love trees in France, that means you must have been a tree in France in your previous life. Me, I love dogs and I love France. So that means I must have been a dog in France. By your tree. (laughs) 
We live in a time, guys, that, that you know, we got to be so politically correct that we, we sometimes forget to be biblically correct. I mean, I think we'll all agree, we can talk all day long about God, nobody has a problem. We can talk about a higher power, nobody has a problem. We can talk about evolution, nobody has a problem. It becomes controversial when we talk about Jesus. The moment that we bring Jesus in, then it becomes controversial. Would all of you agree to that today? See, n nobody debates his existence. No religion debates his existence on earth. Everybody, everybody will accept the fact that Jesus existed. Amen? Most people love his teaching. As long as we're talking about love thy neighbor, help the poor, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, help your friends. But when it comes to the message of Jesus, his exclusive claim of him being the only way. And John 14 and 6 says this. Jesus answered. Who said it? Okay, I don't care if he's Jesus' prophet to you. But Jesus answered and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one. Somebody say no one. That means nobody. No one comes to the Father except through me. That was his exclusive claim that he was the only way. See, not all roads lead to heaven. The blood of Jesus is the only road to heaven. And everybody said, okay. Now, we're going to talk about some different world religions today. Uh, and there's some truth in all of them. And there's some good things in all of them. Amen? Um, Buddhism, they believe there's no God. No type of final existence. They have countless rebirths and praying that one day that it'll end the cycle. Hinduism. They serve an impersonal God. And the only way you can approach Him is through deities and statues and idols. And so if you get with Buddha, Buddhism and Hinduism, there is no forgiveness for sin, and there's no supernatural help. Amen? They believe in karma. In other words, sucker, if you cut me off in traffic, somebody else is going to tr cut you off because you deserved it. Muslims, they worship a personal God, Allah. They have no secondary gods, and, and they have a total ban on idols. And you're to stand with, with Allah is, depends on your good standings and your work. Now, New Age religion has no personal God. They believe in a higher conscience and that we all should be one with the cosmos. Amen? Now, Christianity... Christianity believes that there was a Savior that was born of a virgin that came through the avenue of no sin, knowing no sin, came into this world to become the Savior and the, and the forgiveness of all of our sin. Christianity believes in a personal God, a God that we can talk to at any given time, no matter where we're at and what we're doing, no matter how good we are or how bad we are, a personal God. God that we can speak to in our native language. He knows redneck, y'all. He knows South Georgia. He knows educated, he knows uneducated. He doesn't need hominutical prayers. You don't have to have a, a degree in, in, in Christian science to be able to speak to him. Matter of fact, you don't even have to know the first scripture. All you got to know is Jesus. And guess what? Mm, there he is, because he's a personal God. So today, I'm, 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 I'm 
going to ask each and every one of you today to help me out a little bit. I, I want to ask each one of us today to let's consider Jesus. Can we do that together as a, as, as a group? Can we consider Jesus? I'm not here to ask you to consider joining our church, although it's a pretty good church. I, I'm not here to ask you to consider a denomination. I'm not here to ask you to, to consider a religion. I'm not even asking you to consider me. I'm, matter of fact, don't, please don't consider me because I will probably fail you and let you down. Amen? I'm asking you today to consider Jesus. Matter of fact, I'm not even asking you to consider Christianity today or Christians. How many of you know there's some Christians you don't mind hanging out with? But yet, there's some of them Christians that are narrow-minded, hypocritical. They have bad hair, and they dress funny. I'm not asking you to consider them. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to show you three types of things about Jesus that today we should consider. First, I want to ask you to consider the ministry of Jesus. So if you're taking notes in your, your, guide, your worship guide, consider the ministry of Jesus. We're going to look at Mark chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. It says, When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw Jesus eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? That's the question. Why would the Messiah, out of all the people that he could sit with, why would he sit, sit with them? Amen? I don't know about you, I'm glad he did. Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. He said, I, didn't, I, I come for those that are sick that needs a doctor. I come, listen, I didn't come for all you that are sitting over here in the corner polishing your halo. Sit over there, Miss Self-Righteous, and polish your, your little halo because I come for that one that everybody else has cast it aside. I come, I come for those that, that, that religion has banded, that has forgotten that religious people look down their nose at. They don't dress like us. They don't act like us. And, and they don't know the Christianese language. I come for those that don't know any language but Jesus. I need help. I come for the sick. He come for those that got caught in adultery. He came for those that, are, that have been strung out in a hotel room wanting to kill themselves. He came for those that have worked the street corners. He come for the sick. But let's consider his ministry today. What did he do in his ministry? He opened blind eyes. He caused the mute to speak. He caused the deaf to hear. He caused the lame to walk again. He even as much as raised the dead. He took a, a, a boy's sack lunch and fed multitudes. But the greatest, the first miracle that he ever did, and so many people today still struggle from it, and it may be you here today. He turned the water into wine. Somewhere in the original text, I'm sure it was non-alcoholic. That was a joke, y'all. Don't get all tight on me now. <laughs> Amen? He healed the lepers. He forgave those in sin. He healed the brokenhearted. I said it today and 
There's many miracles that I'm sure if I, matter of fact, look at your neighbor and say he's talking to you. You are a miracle of God. Some here, we got stories that would probably curl the hair on your neck. Remember when Paul and Jonathan couldn't get pregnant, but yet they did. Doctor said there was going to be complication. There was, but God healed it. Then they got pregnant the second time. And they told us that Emma Grace was going to have Down syndrome. Even in the delivery room, the doctor said, I don't know why you're giving birth to this child. Somewhere from, from conception to delivery, she was healed because of the ministry of Jesus. Shannon was here on the first service, Pam's daughter. She went in to have a procedure done on her knee, and, and she died at the doctor's office. Somewhere from taking that last breath to family praying, the ministry of Jesus resurrected her from the dead. Can I be transparent with you just a minute? I'm a miracle from God. I'm living testimony of the power of deliverance. I was born to a family that was very dysfunctional. At the age of five on an Easter Sunday, I lost my sister to drowning to death. She drowned to death on my, on, when I was five. So for the rest of our life, ever Easter came around, Daddy was going to get drunk, there was going to be a fight, somebody was going to get hurt, law was going to be called, and we was going to have a bad day. She was seven years old. I didn't realize it, but she was, that was a year of completion. As a child, I got put into the, to the um, system, abandoned. As a grown man, I could tell you all kinds of stories along the way, but fast forward through my life, and I found myself strung out on meth. In a desperate cry of wanting some help, knowing I had one of two options, die or die. Because it wasn't getting any better. I knelt down off of my couch and I, I asked God if you're real. Because I wasn't raised in a family. Never went to church. The only time I ever went to church is if there was a girl I was interested in. And she, I had to go meet her family. Can anybody in here witness with me today? It's the only time. I wasn't interested in what the preacher had to say. I remember crying out, God, if you're real. If you're real. At that moment, the ministry of Jesus Christ came into my life. Can I tell you something? When I got up off of that floor, I wasn't a, a, a better picture of who I am. I was completely transformed by the power of the ministry of Jesus Christ. That was 23 years ago. Have I failed? Absolutely. Have I backslidden into drugs? Never. He took the desire away. Took everything away. I fail him every day. I have to pull on grace every day just like every one of us do. Amen? He didn't make me a, just a better well, he ain't quite doing what he used to do. He, had, he must, that church is doing him some good over there. He ain't quite cussing like he used to, and he ain't getting high near as much as he once was. And, and you know, I mean, Lord, he, he, well, he was pretty rough. He ain't getting mad quite as much as he, I mean, just twice last week. No, 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 baby. No. All old things passed away, and they became new. 
See, the world says that once a junkie, always a junkie. But the Word of God said, Jesus said Himself, the one the Son sets free is free indeed. I'm asking you to consider the ministry of Jesus. And everybody said, consider the ministry of Jesus. Number two, let's consider the resurrection of Jesus. Consider the resurrection of Jesus. This is powerful, y'all. Somebody say the resurrection. As our Savior hung on that cross, humiliated, spat on, bleeding, his back with the meat just ripped out of his back in sheer pain. He did something that none of us here sitting here today could do. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. There's no love greater than that, my friend. No love any greater than that. And as he took that last breath, he said, Father, I commence my spirit to you. Caused the centurion, to fall to his knees and accept Jesus that day when he said, surely he must be the Son of God. Surely, because no man could do this. Surely he must be the Son of God. And how many of you know three days later that stone was rolled away? Some of us sitting in here today, we got a stone over our heart. And God's trying his best to roll it back today. I ask you to let him roll that stone back. Peter, the start of the first church, preached a revival that thousands got saved. In Acts chapter 3, verse 15, this is what Peter penned. He said, you killed the author of life. But God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses to this. You killed the author of life. But God raised him from the dead. You, mankind, killed the author of life. But God raised him from the dead. And this is what is important. He said, and we were witnesses to this. There was 11 disciples. As you know, Judas hung himself. Ten of the eleven was crucified because they were a witness to this. They were a witness to this. So they were crucified. John was exiled to the, to the Isle of Patmos. And he, and he lived there a lonely life till he died of old age. Some people believe that The Roman soldiers stole the body of Jesus. That's not even good sense. They would have loved to have produced a body so they could say he was not the Son of God. Some people uh, like to say that, that the disciples stole the body of Jesus. Now, does that really make good sense that 11 unarmed, uneducated men devised a strategy to overtake the, the, the trained Roman soldiers and steal the body. At great cost, it cost them their life because they were a witness to the resurrection. See, there's times in our life, I'm telling you, you accept Jesus doesn't mean everything's going to go away. But what it does mean is you won't have to do it by yourself. We all deal with things every day. But for them disciples to steal the body of Jesus and deprive all mankind the greatest gift that God gave us, That's not rational thinking, is it? Amen. And on top of that, they kept it a secret. 
Have you ever found 11 people that can keep something a secret? The moment you tell somebody something, it's no longer a secret. Amen? I mean, they died. They died as martyrs to the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I like Thomas. Thomas is about like most of us sitting here today. Doubting Thomas, you know, need a little more, need a little more evidence. He got sent to uh, India as the first missionary evangelist to India. They came to him, they said, Thomas, if, uh, how many of you know that Thomas came and said, well, look, I, I got to see for myself. When I can put my hands in it, then I'll, I'll accept that. Well, Jesus, as you know, he died, and, and on the third day he rose. But he didn't go to heaven that day. He spent 40 days on the earth walking. And, and what he did is he came to Thomas and said, let me show you. Thomas got to stick his fingers in, and he got to experience for himself the truth. He witnessed the resurrection. See, somebody that's witnessed the resurrection will be like Thomas because, see, they came to Thomas in India and said, Thomas, you need to deny this Jesus or we're going to put you to death. He said, as long as I live, I will never deny because I'm a witness to the resurrection. And they speared him to death. They, catapult, they put a spear all the way through him to kill him. As long as I draw breath, I will never doubt my Jesus. I ask you to consider the ministry of Jesus. I've asked you to consider the resurrection of Jesus. And I also want to ask you to consider the eternal message of Jesus. Romans 3 and verse 22. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. We are made right with God. Somebody say we're made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. We ask ourselves a question. How do we make it right with God? How we make it right with God is placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. Ooh, Lord Jesus, thank you. Nobody can pray you to heaven. Nobody can buy you to heaven. I don't even know how far I want to go with this, but there's only one way to heaven, and that's placing your faith in Jesus Christ. That's the eternal ministry of Jesus Christ. Jesus didn't come to start a religion. He didn't come to start a denomination, man-made denominations, because we can't get along about everything. It's crazy. Well, they speak in tongues over there. They're going to hell. Then you get over here. They don't speak in tongues. They're going to hell. Then you get over here, and some say, well, if you shave your legs, you're going to hell. If you're over here with Brother Mark, Mark's going to say, if you need it, you better shave your legs. If they put on makeup, they're going to hell. If your barn needs paint, paint it. He didn't come for us to have a religion. He came for a relationship so that we could have a personal God that loves us in spite of who we are or what we have or what we don't have or where you've been. He wants to take you to a place that you've never been before and it's called eternity in heaven. He wants you to make home with Him. Amen? Hallelujah. That's all that matters at the end of the day. 
When we're standing around somebody's casket and looking at them, all we should be asking, did they make heaven their home? And ask ourselves the question, did we make heaven our home? That was the eternal message that Jesus came. That's why he came. Every part of his life, he came. He hung on that cross. He didn't have an earthly father to inherit the, the sin nature of man. He was born of a, vir- of a virgin conceived by the Holy Spirit. He didn't have a father with those sin-natured curses in his life. He came spotless and he lived a sin-free life. And the moment that he hung upon that cross, he took all of our sin, past, present, and future for him on that cross that day. And that's why he said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? Because he saw ugly that he never saw before he saw your sin my sin the world's sin that day can I tell you something church Jesus came so that we can have life and life more abundantly full of joy and peace he came because he's pure love He did it because he loved us, not because he was obligated. He did it because he loved us so much that his father in heaven could not look upon the sin. He had to turn his back on his son. And Jesus took all of that to hell. The Bible says for three days he was gone. Y'all thought he was in that tomb. He was down there with, with the devil kicking him in the teeth. He took the, death, the keys to death, hell, and the grave for you and for me so that we can be victorious in this life. That's what Jesus came for. And I ask you today, from everything in me, consider Jesus. Don't matter what your beliefs are. Don't matter what denomination you are. What you believe and what you don't believe. Don't believe. I don't matter if you believe in people holding their hands up in church or they don't. Do you know Jesus? That's where he's going to get your name from. It's not going to be because your grandma was a good woman and she was a prayer warrior. He's not going to get that name from because you gave to the Shriners. He's going to get that name because you confessed him as your Lord and your Savior. He's not going to get that name because he got it out of a phone book. He's going to get it out of the Lamb's book. So with every head bowed in here this morning, let's pray. Father, I ask right now for miracles. We consider your ministry today. We consider your resurrection. We consider your eternal message. Father, I ask that you open the hearts and the ears of each and every person sitting here today. Let this be a day of, that we can look back upon years to come. Most importantly, that we can look back on this day when we stand before the throne judgment. If you're sitting here today and you have family members that are not saved, that you wouldn't know if they made he- would make heaven their home, and you'd like to pray for them this morning, would you just lift your hand right where you sit? I'm going to pray for them first this morning. Hallelujah. The Bible says that any two come together as touch and agree. I'm a result of a praying aunt that didn't give up on me. She kept praying for me. Father, I lift up each and every one of these family members. We open our arms and we open our heart and we say, 
have your way in their life. You say, how can a man come unto you unless he be drawn by the Spirit? Holy Spirit, sick him in the name of Jesus. We ask that you send a labor to the field. And we receive by faith that they be healed, whole, lacking of nothing. Nothing broken, nothing missing. But most of all, that they confess you. Because your word says that there's coming a time that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess Jesus as Lord. And we thank you for it. Now, Father, save them in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people said, amen. With nobody stirring, nobody interrupting the atmosphere, if you will, stand to your feet a moment, bow your heads. I now have a question to ask you. I've asked you to consider Jesus, consider his ministry, consider his resurrection, consider his eternal message right now. Because no man's promised the next minute. But if you would be absent from this body today, ma'am, sir, would you make heaven your home? Nobody can answer that for you. Only you and God. You're here today and you don't know why, but there's something in you right now just kind of, ooh, is stirring and you just, you're just so, matter of fact, your body can be a little uncomfortable. It's okay. It's normal. It's the Spirit drawing you. Maybe here today and, and you just don't have that, sh- that knowing in your heart. If that's you, would you raise your hand this morning? Say, out, pray for me, Pastor. Pray for me. Hallelujah. God sees those hands. God sees those hands. Hallelujah. If you're here and you would like to make that commitment today, I'm going to ask you to do this. The Bible says, if you be ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before the Father. So if that's you, if you will, step out and come down here and let me pray with you this morning. Come. 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 Right now, if you would like to have that security, knowing that Jesus is the Lord of your life and that heaven would be your home, come. Come. Don't no stir it around. Come. Hallelujah. Heaven's free to you. It's a matter of confession and believing in your heart. Eternity's a long time. If you're here today, and you want to make that public profession, come. Hallelujah. Here at Life Spring, we ask that no one pray by themselves. As a church, as a whole, I ask you to pray together aloud with us. Say this prayer with me. Say, Father, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Save me. I know that Jesus died. And on the third day, he arose for my salvation. Jesus, move into my heart. Holy Spirit, fill me. Lead me. Guide me. And direct me. Jesus, write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I receive by faith my salvation. I am a child of the King. I am saved, sanctified, and set apart. I receive my salvation in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. That's your. Now, let me say that. These up here, those out there, if you said that from your heart today, you're as saved as you're ever going to be. The Bible says confession 
is made unto salvation. The enemy's going to try to tell you whatever he could tell you before you get to your car. There was nothing to that prayer. Can I tell you something? If there wasn't nothing to that prayer, he wouldn't bother you. He didn't bother you when you was dancing on the tables in another spirit. And now everybody said, somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Now y'all need to hug your new brothers and sisters in Christ.